think about a simple organism like an amoeba. Uh, it's a single cell. Uh, it's a very complex organism, a very complicated life, and it does, in essence, many of the things we do as human beings. Uh, it has a birth, it has a lifespan, it has death, it can get sick, uh, it needs to procure energy in order to maintain itself, but it does not have a brain. It manages to do all that absolutely beautiful, astonishing process of life regulation and coping with different uh, troubles in the environment in a way that does not require a brain. And the reason why it does so, the reason why bacteria, which are by far the most successful organisms on the face of the earth, do not need a brain, is that they actually have a very complicated life, but still relatively simple compared to the kind of life we have. And they have a very simple, relatively speaking, uh, environment. Their ecological niche is fairly simple. And therefore, the machinery that they have in their cytoplasm and that they have within their nucleus is perfectly capable of coping with the challenges of that environment. Now, when you think about complex organisms that are multicellular, they're made of many, many cells, millions of them, and many tissues, and actually have the capacity to trespass into other environments and survive in other environments, like, for example, human beings that can survive anywhere on the face of the planet and can cope inventively with the challenges of different environments, then we've got another story. And it is out of this situation of uh, the, the different environments, the challenges of more complex environments, and the need to cope with them that uh, over evolution, over a variety of processes of um, chance and selection, we came to have nervous systems, which at first were very simple, but eventually became complex like the brain. And the most complex kinds of brains, such as those we have, are brains that can produce representations of the life process, representations of their own bodies, representations of the world outside. And it is those representations which are made in the form of neural maps, maps that are implemented in neurons, and that create images. It's out of that that mind really comes. So if you ask what is the mind, well, the mind is a collection of flowing images, and those images are built on neural maps. And those neural maps are maps of the world outside and of the world within the body.